evening in the news tonight, Woodbury police display some items similar to ones believed to have belonged to murder victim Sharon Bloom. And tonight, the I-Team takes us to Mexico, where babies are bought and sold on the streets. And preparations are underway for tomorrow's Rolling Stones concert. We'll have the details coming up at 10. It's Miller Auto Center's end-of-the-month blowout sale. New 1989 and 1990 Nissan Sentra four doors and two doors now incredibly reduced at just $69.99. Now at Miller Auto Center, St. Cloud. Van Gophers join the anti-drug campaign. Please join us for these and other stories. Weeknights on TV 712. This is CBS. Next on the 10 p.m. report, the U.S. Supreme Court is scheduled to take up a case involving Minnesota and abortion. We'll have a preview. Police ask for help in solving the murder of Sharon Bloom. The I-Team takes us to Mexico to explore the link between a Minnesota adoption agency and a Mexican attorney under investigation for selling babies. And Twin City students are visited by Minnesota Vikings and some gophers. I'm Colleen Needles. And I'm Don Shelby. The 10 p.m. report with Mark Rosen and Mike Fairborn is coming up next. When the person who doctors the family gets a cough and cold, everyone suffers. Mom, someone took my sleeve. I earned it myself. Now Dad's ironing your clothes, Mom. Time to doctor that cough with Robitussin. Because more doctors and pharmacists recommend Robitussin than any other cough medicine. Look, Mom's feeling better. Uh -oh. Robitussin, recommended by Dr. Mom. Which Robitussin is right for you? Ask your doctor or pharmacist. Tradition. Yours free when you invest at Metropolitan Federal Bank. It took only one truck to bring Sigco corn to Chuck Hendrickson's farm. Hi, Mary. Hi. Five months later. After Chuck won the National Corn Growing Championship with over 235 bushels per acre, it took 21 slightly bigger trucks to take it away. Isn't it time you planted Sigco? It's hand -bent. Woodbury police display items similar to ones they believe belong to a murder victim. Tonight, they're asking for the public's help in finding the killer. WCCO Television presents Don Shelby, Colleen Needles, Mike Fairborn, and Mark Rosen. This is the 10 p.m. report. Good evening. That murder victim is 38-year-old Sharon Bloom of South Minneapolis. The 3M employee disappeared from her office in Woodbury on November 2nd. Her body was discovered November 13th. And tonight, authorities are asking for the public's help in solving the murder of Sharon Bloom, and Mike Walsher has the details. Bloom's body was found in a field 10 days after she vanished. She'd been beaten to death somewhere else, her body left here. Police searched the field a couple of days, but items like these were not found with the body and may have been left wherever she was killed. They include a pair of dark women's dress shoes with two-inch heels, a dark blue or charcoal gray plaid skirt with the label Milburn Clothes and Milburn Clothing Company, and a large lady's handbag, tan or beige in color. There are items inside the purse that could prove very valuable for us. For instance, she has a, uh, one of those electronic uh, date keepers, memo holders, and if she had a luncheon engagement that day, it may be on that, that piece of equipment. Police also want to talk to anyone who saw a stalled car jump-started near this intersection of Suburban Avenue and Woodbury. It would have been around noon, November 2nd. The car may be linked to Sharon's disappearance. Police in Woodbury say the phone calls on this case have slowed to a trickle in recent days, and they say they need some fresh leads and new evidence to find the killer. I'm Mike Walter, WCCO Television News, the Twin Cities. Friends and family members helped police put together descriptions of Sharon's belongings. Now, if you had any information that might help, you are asked to call the Woodbury Police Department. The telephone number is 739 
4141. 21-month-old Alyssa Smith, the little girl who received a section of her mother's liver in a first-of-its-kind transplant, was back in surgery today. Doctors had to control some internal bleeding on the surface of the new liver. After four and a half hours in the operating room, doctors now say she is back on a smooth course. She is awake and active, and her father says her face lit up when she saw him after the surgery. Her mother, the first living donor for a liver transplant, has improved from critical to fair condition. First Lady Barbara Bush underwent two hours of eye tests today at the Rochester Mayo Clinic. Eye specialists told Mrs. Bush her Graves disease, which causes teary eyes and double vision, has not gotten worse, but has not gotten better either. Today, doctors prescribed different doses of medication for the ailment. After the eye exam, the First Lady visited the Rochester Public Library and read her favorite book to the children, Alex and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day. She left Minnesota this afternoon and is back home in Washington tonight. Mrs. Bush said she expected 18 inches of snow and to be frozen to death on her first visit to Rochester, but found it, quote, perfectly beautiful. One of the most famous figures of the Nixon and Ford administrations was in Minneapolis today. Henry Kissinger is in town for a speech and a fundraiser. He also came in for some intense heckling from protesters attacking what they called his support for the bloody regime in El Salvador. But Mr. Kissinger gave as good as he got. First of all, you haven't the foggiest idea of what I support and what I don't support.